my beautiful crochet friends. It's Chris of Light and Joy Designs and welcome to the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour which is a year-long crochet along where every week I give you a free new pattern with a free crochet tutorial and this week's pattern is the Easy Mandala Dreamcatcher. And the thing that I want to tell you about this pattern is two things. One is how easy it is to make, even though it doesn't look easy. And number two is how quick it is to make. This is a very short project. It'd probably take you maximum an hour and a half, maybe only an hour. So um, all the links to everything, including the signing up for the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour are down below. So go ahead and subscribe here at YouTube. Click those links after the video. And uh, if you wouldn't mind giving this a thumbs up so that we, uh, so that I can keep bringing these great tutorials to you. All right, let's jump in. For this pattern, you're going to need probably less than 100 yards of worsted weight cotton. That's what I'm using. The cotton that I'm using is from Hobby, H-O-B-B-I-I dot com, and it's in their Rainbow 8-8, 100% cotton. Each of these is 87 yards long, and we barely use um, that any that much of it. Um, we'll be using a 5.5 millimeter hook, a yarn needle, scissors. I'm using an 8 inch diameter metal hoop that I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, they're really cheap. This was only $1.50. They also have them on Amazon and I'll have links to all of the materials. And then um, probably a book of some kind for making the fringe. And I'm using this book here called The Art of Possibility. <laughs> I just thought I'd highlight it since I had it out. This is a great book for individuals and leaders for um, inspiring yourself and inspiring others to do their best in both art and in life in general. So. I highly recommend this book, even though it's, well, it's kind of indirectly related. Hopefully I'll be inspiring you to do your best work here. All right, so let's, uh, let's, let's tackle this. Let's jump in. So for my version, I'm using a color fade uh, from dark blue all the way to a bright white. And if you want to copy this exact fade of color, uh, they give their colors numbers instead of names, so it goes uh, 70, 71, 32, 26, 40, 42, 26, 41. I'll have this all in the blog post and in the written pattern. If you want to copy the purple one that I did, the dark color goes from, starts at 39, 68, 40, 67, 1, and 41. The way that this pattern is worked is we're going to make the mandala first, then we're going to wrap the hoop in yarn, then we'll attach the mandala, and then we'll attach the fringe. Something nice about these Hobby Rainbow skeins is they have a nice pull tie from the center. So to begin we are going to create a slip knot. Pull the yarn over and then pull this one up. Put it on your hook. And again we're using a 5 millimeter hook. Sorry, 5.5 millimeter hook. We're going to chain four, yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, two, three, four, 
and then we're going to join to the very first chain with a slip stitch. Just go under one of those threads, one or two of those threads, yarn over, pull through your yarn, and then pull that through the loop on your hook. Now we're going to chain three for our first, that's going to count as our first double crochet. One, two, three. And now into the center of this ring, we are going to do 15 more double crochets. And as we do that, we're just going to go right over this tail to work it in. So to do a double crochet, we yarn over, go into the center of the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So just do that for 15 all together. And actually with your chain three at the beginning, you will end up having 16 double crochets all together. And as you're doing this, you're going to just pull these down because we're really going to kind of stuff this with a lot of double crochets. So to make room, just hold on to the ring and pull these guys down a little bit to make room for all of them. Okay, so I have 16, including my chain three, the beginning chain three. And now we're going to slip stitch to the third chain, the third original chain. There's one, two, three. I'm going to go into that chain, and I like to go. Sorry about this guys, it's just a little tight. I like to go under two threads so that it's a little more um, secure. Now, I'm gonna be switching to my next yarn after this. Um, I meant to say this at the beginning. If you want, you can certainly make this with just one color. Um, and uh, you can also make it with doesn't have to be a fade of colors. It could be, you know, rainbow colors or whatever you like. So now that we've done that slip stitch, what we're going to do if you're changing colors is you're going to cut your yarn and put that one aside and grab your next color. And we're going to attach this color right to this loop here. So I'm going to um, take the new color and I'm going to just put it over my finger, grab it with my hook and pull it through that loop that's on the hook. And then I'm going to grab this tail that's connected to this loop here. I'm just going to pull that nice and tight. And then pull that loop down so that it's snug on the hook. And you may have to tighten it a couple of times. Um, and now what we're going to do is row two. So for row two, we're going to be doing double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, all the way around. So the way that's going to start is we're going to chain three for our first double crochet. One, two, three. And then we're gonna chain one more, that's our chain one. And then we're gonna go into the very next stitch, which is this one right here. Sometimes that one is easy to miss. 
and I'm going to I'm just going to work in my tails as I go around as well. So I'm going to do a double crochet. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go under that very next stitch. Holding these tails behind so that I can work those in. Yarn over. Pull through a loop. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. And I'm just going to tighten everything up here a little bit to make sure that we don't have anything that's, um, that's loose. Okay, so now you chain one and we just go into the next stitch and do a double crochet. Chain one and then another double crochet and so on. So just go ahead and do that all the way around. When you're done you should have 16 double crochets and 16 chain one spaces. I'm almost to the end of these tails so I'm just going to cut them here, being careful not to cut my work. And I'm just going to continue. Okay, I have just two left here. And the last one. This yarn is so soft to work with, it's so nice. Let's just count to make sure we're at the right count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six. Perfect. And we have our chain one. So now we're just going to connect that to the third chain with a slip stitch. And now we're ready to begin row three. So I'm going to cut my yarn from row two and I'm going to open my, my next color and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, I'm going to chain one and pull the yarn through on this one here and just pull that down tight to secure it because I'm going to be going into, I'm going to connect the yarn at this chain one space here. Now if you're working in just one color, just slip stitch over to the chain one to start the next row. So for this row, I'm just going to make a slip knot. I'm going to connect it here at the chain one space. So I'm going to pull that underneath and then I'm going to chain, I'm going to tighten that down. And I'm going to chain three for my first double crochet. What we're going to be doing in this next row is we're going to be doing two double crochets into each of the chain one spaces and then a single, and then a, uh, a chain one. So that's one, two, three. And now I'm going to do my second double crochet and I'm going to work in these tails as I go along. So that's two into that first chain one space and now I'm going to chain one and now I'm going to go to the next chain one space right here and I'm going to do two double crochets in there. 
Now, since this is not a garment, I'm not really so worried about the, the tails. They will just be, you won't be able to see them. They'll be worked in in the back. So I did my chain one. Now it's time to do two more double crochets. So you'll just do that all the way around. Two double crochets in each chain one space working in your tails as you go, and then a chain one. And every so often just give a very gentle tug, not so that it's tight, but just so that it's not loose either on these, on these tails. Okay, so I just finished the last two double crochets of row three. I'm going to do a chain one, and I'm gonna to connect to the one, two, third chain from my starting chain. Connect it with a slip stitch. Sometimes you have to be careful getting through all those threads. Okay, so for row four, if you're working in one color, just slip stitch over one, two to the center of this chain one. And if you are doing multiple colors like me, you're going to just chain one and cut the yarn and pull that yarn through, secure that. So now we're ready to bring in our fourth color for row four. I'm going to tie a slip knot and I'm going to go into this chain one space here, put my hook through, grab that slip knot. I'm going to tighten it up and I will be working in these tails as I go as well. I'm going to pull that loop through and I'm going to chain three for my first double crochet. Now I'm going to chain one for my V stitch and I'm gonna do another double crochet into that chain one space. And that's one V stitch completed. Now, in between each V-stitch, we're going to do a chain one. Then we're going to go to the next chain one space. And we're going to do another V-stitch. So that's a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. So in between each V-stitch, do your chain one, and then do your next V-stitch in the next chain one space, and do that all the way around. So I just finished my last V-stitch. I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to connect it to the third chain of my starting chain three with a slip stitch. And if you want to double check that you're at the right place, you should have 16 of these V stitches. So two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, 16. So now we're ready for the final row. Okay, so we are going to cut our yarn. If you're changing yarns, and just pull that yarn through, secure that. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be joining our fifth color into, um, into the V-stitch. So into the chain one space where the V-stitches are. Any one is fine. So I'm going to um, make a slip knot tighten that up. 
take it off my hook. I'm going to go in through that in through that first V stitch there. Grab my my um, the loop, and I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to tighten that down, and then I'm just going to do a single crochet into that space. So you go right back into that space, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through the two loops on your hook. That's your single crochet. So now for the final row, what we do is we chain two, one, two. Then we chain three and we make a pico. So the way that you do that is you chain one, two, three. And I, I hold down on the chain two so that I know exactly where to go in. And then you go into the third chain from the hook and do a slip stitch. So you go in there, yarn over, pull through a loop, and pull it through the loop on your hook. And that makes a little pico. Then you chain two, one, two. And then we go to the next V stitch. You can see these two are together. And we go into that chain one space there. And we do a single crochet. So you go into the space, yarn over, pull up a loop. I like to hold these, hold this work back and it makes it easier to do the single crochet. Sometimes after you've done um, chains, it can be a little awkward doing that single crochet, but if you hold the work to the back, I'll show that to you again. Chain two, hold those two, and now chain three. We're going to make our pico. One, two, three. We're going to go into the third chain from the hook. One, two, three. We're going to yarn over, pull through a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on my hook. Now I'm going to chain two. One, two. I'm going to look for the next V stitch right here. Go into that, yarn over, pull up a loop, hold that work to the back, and then yarn over, pull through those two loops. That's a single crochet. So just do that all the way around, and I'll meet you at the end to show you how to join it up. So I'm just about to go into my last V-stitch. I'm going to do a single crochet and then I'm going to do one more set. One, two, one, two, three. Do a slip stitch to make the pico. One, two. And now I'm going to join it right to this first single crochet. And you do that by going under those top two threads. Yarn over, pull through a loop, and we're just going to slip stitch it right onto the loop on our hook. We're going to cut the yarn, pull that yarn through, and I'm just going to sew in the ends that I have left before we begin to put it onto the hoop.
I sewed everything in on the back so that in the front none of those ends will show. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this and this is just the way that I do it. I'm going to um, take my hoop and I'm going to just tie a knot. And then I'm just going to begin to wrap it. And actually it helps if you don't have a lot of yarn as you wrap. So what I do is I just go around and around and around and around. This is this part is probably takes the most amount of time. And you can twirl this end over here. And then just kind of hold it in place every time you tighten it up. And just keep going around and around, in and out of the hoop. And every so often, you're just going to tighten it up, twist in the opposite directions. And just keep doing that until the entire hoop is covered. Now you do also have the option, um, if you don't want to cover the hoop, you can leave the metal showing and that will take even less time. It's completely up to you how you would like to do it. I just happen to like the look of the hoop being covered. So go ahead and cover that all the way around and I'll meet you at the end. I am so close. There's a few more winds of the yarn here. That looks good to me. So now I'm going to I'm going to um, cut a long tail because we're going to use this for maybe 20 or 30 inches. I always like to cut more in case I, I don't like to run out. So once you cut that tail, then you're going to join it to your original and I'm going to just tighten that up. The, I'm tightening, tightening up the twist on the, the opposite end and then I'm going to tie a knot here at the top. All right, so now for the fun part. So we're gonna take the end of your tail and you're going to take your yarn needle thread it and now we're going to go in and out of the hoop and each of these picots all the way around. And that's going to kind of stretch this out. So let's go into the first one. And you don't have to have the sizing right because we're gonna tighten it up kind of as we go. So let me lower this down a little bit here so you can see a little better. So 
So I'm, you can see I'm going, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going around the hoop and then up through the pico. All the way around, I'm gonna go up again through the hoop, up and over and then up through the next pico. And as you're going around, you can you can sort of start to tighten it a little bit. So I go under and over. So whatever you're doing, just um, keep repeating that. I go under and over the hoop and then up through the next pico. This looks like, sorry, this looks like the hole of the pico, but it's, it's really not. The, the pico hole is here. So I'm gonna go up through that. So I'm gonna put this on fast forward for you a little bit. Here at the last pico, I'm gonna go up through that, and now I'm going to tighten it. So I want to make this nice and even, and I will get that evenness by just pulling on this. And actually, what I want to do is one more time is go. I want to go one more time under and over and back through the through the first pico here so i'm going to um, pull on this on my tail that's my chihuahua in the background having doggy dreams and it's more of a art than a science. I'm just going to kind of pull these, pull the this thread. Until it looks even. And because we've covered the hoop in yarn, there's a sort of a resistance that kind of holds it in place as you're going along. And this looks about even. I'll pull it just a little tighter down here. There we go. Okay, I think that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end of my or I started that other knot and I'm going to tie a knot here to secure it. And then you can make your hanging tie um, you know, however feels right to you. I'm just going to pull this through. I'm going to turn it over to the wrong side and I'm going to pull it around one more time. Make 
like a half hitch knot. And then I'm going to tie this to this end here. Okay, so that'll be ready to hang. So these these um, threads will just get. Uh, you can just weave them in in the back. And just tie one more knot to be on the safe side. Now we're ready to make our fringe. I'm just going to take this tail. I'm just going to weave it in and out of this one line here. Come back through here. And then just come back up through here. And then I'm just going to clip that. And this is in the back of the work, so it won't show. I can tell this is the back of the work because I can see where all my, I can kind of see my tails there. So now we're going to put the fringe on. So you can make any kind of fringe you like. Um, the fringe that I've made for mine is I just go into the bottom five openings and I make five pieces of long fringe that I attach there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do that in my white and I'm just going to take my book and I'm going to wrap the yarn around 25 times and that's going to give me five times five pieces. So I'm going to cut the end on around 25 times and then what I'm going to do is on the bottom of the book I'm just going to cut down the center here. So now I have my 25 strands and I'm just going to take five at a time and get the ends together. I'm going to fold it in half and you can figure out which way you like your tassel to go and I believe the way I like it is I go down through the hole. Let me see if this is the right way. Actually, no. Right. Yeah, that's it. And then I just tighten that up. And then I just repeat that for four more times. And again, you can do yours, your, your fringe however you like. There's a lot of different ways you can do fringe. So I've got my five. 
line them up. I'm going to go down. And again, I have my right face, my right side facing here. Go down and then up, pull the strands through that loop or hole. I'm just going to do that three more times. Okay, so there we go. Got my tassels. And if you want, you can put beads on the ends of these or, you know, anything that you like. Um, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining here. Um, again, all the links to uh, everything is in the description below the blog post with all the materials. Um, one little correction. This color is number one. I kind of switched some numbers, but I'll, I'll fix that in the description below. And uh, please do share links to yours if you make this project yourself. I would love to see how yours turns out. And let me know what you think of the pattern. Did you find it easy? Um, how long it took you, and so on. So thanks for joining, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.